Welcome to the new River City Gamers Podcast, hosted by SCXCR and Well Unreal 007, as well as many other members from the River City Gamers website. Stay tuned for all the gaming news, new pickups, and everything else we feel like talking about on the River City Gamers Podcast. And welcome to the River City Gamers Podcast. I am SCXCR. I am Unreal. And I'm Wizard 100. And I am Angel Halo. And Halo. I don't know why I feel like talking like this. I just do. Uh, I might have a reason, because I just came back from Canada's Wonderland. Well, actually, that was yesterday I came back, but whatever. I kind of just woke up. Oh, really? And I came from class. Oh yeah, it is a Monday after all. And the day where I learn about the ears, the eyes, and pretty much general anatomy and physiology. Did you also learn about the gaming news? The gaming news! So real. Let's start with um, the biggest punchline of the year again. Aliens Colonial Marines. Yay. Yay! I'm actually glad I didn't have the money to buy that, because you know what? That ended up saving me money. Uh, okay, um, this story really pertains to Sega and Gearbox being slapped with a class action lawsuit. The reason is because they were accused of lying about the game to get it sold. In other oh, words, yes, it alleges that the demo footage that was used to promote Colonial Marines advertising the shooter with images that bore little resemblance to the unfinished product. What do you guys have to say to that? No surprise here. Uh, Wasn't this game hyped for a pretty long time? Uh, Kinda, actually. It it was. It it wasn't it hyped since PlayStation 2, but they, like, put it off because of uh, some sort of issue they had. (laughs) It was announced the, like, as they started development. And when they did that, the people who were supposed to be developing it were like, what, what What? the hell are you doing? Why'd you announce it already? When you do that, you, you're kind of pressured and kind of might not get it on time. That's why I always don't do uh, beating. Or put trailers until the final product is done. Now, in, in terms of claiming uh, the false footage stuff, um, there have been games that have... Um, definitely shown things that are not representative of the final product. A couple examples is um, that famous Killzone 2 E3 trailer, and hell, even some older footage of Bioshock Infinite. But the biggest difference between all that stuff is, by the time those games were closer to release and coming out, they advertised the actual footage. What Sega kept doing was they kept showing the wrong footage for their advertisement. There's a big difference. And also getting everybody's hopes high. Also doesn't end there. Both Gearbox and Sega did respond to this. Um, Here's a couple of quotes. Sega cannot comment on specifics of ongoing litigation, but we are confident that the lawsuit is without merit and we will defend it vigorously. What a fantastic way of losing your money. So they're standing by the fact that they lied. Classy. That's great. I think this is the point where Gearbox might have lost it. Actually, maybe a little earlier, but this definitely stands there. Moving away from Gearbox, let's go back to EA. Uh, Yeah, our favorite Every goddamn week. The and one this that other company that's infamous for being what it is now. And is this what I think it, it's going to be? It depends. It's one that I'm not liking one bit. This news article basically talks about that the future of um, future Star Wars game rests with EA. Yep. <laughs> oh, Luke, God damn it, why? Out of all the companies... To handle Star Wars. Good job, Disney. You close LucasArts and you give the freaking Star Wars gaming license to them? 
EA. You really? Gave, you gave it to EA? What? Oh, I feel like I want to quit gaming because of this. But now, no, hang on. Let, let's be a little fair here. But one thing, at least the Star Wars game is going somewhere, and this does open possibilities for other Star Wars projects, like KOTAR 3. So there's definitely a future in there, and EA has been pretty no- known for action games. That's also pretty well known for running developers into the fucking ground. Yeah, I was just about to go into the downside. Uh, we are all aware of EA's, um, you might as well call it a policy by now, um, either always online or having DRM of some kind to constantly make it a major inconvenience for the customer as much as possible. Doesn't sell five million? Fuck your studio, you're dead. <laughs> and their tendency to genericize everything. I believe, I believe there was a talk about Fuse some time ago. Oh, yeah. Don't even get into that. No, I don't want to be reminded at all. Although, slight amendment to the EA Always Online thing, they confirmed that The Sims 4 will not have that. Oh, that's good. Well, the question is, will it be good? Probably not. Yeah, okay. Um, Although, I could just... I could just imagine something going wrong in future Star Wars games and Star Wars fans everywhere probably doing videos that talk about, oh, you know, there's been some great history behind it, and then EA happened. The label president, Frank Gibbue, Gibbue, I believe. I don't care how I pronounce his name, honestly. Let's just call him Frank. Um, he says that Dice and Visceral will produce new games, joining the Bioware team, which continues to develop the Star Wars franchise. If the new experiences we create may borrow from films, but the games will be entirely original with all new stories and gameplay. I'm just predicting that the box art quality is just going to have one clone trooper or Jedi face down, eyes up. Like every fucking shooter. Every single fucking hover is going to be like that. They will all be original experiences, which is why they will all be powered by the Frostbite 3 engine from Battlefield 3. <laughs> why does it sound like the thing they tried to do with Force Unleashed with the physics and so forth? By the way, I'm not joking. That's what the article I found actually says. Uh, well, there's, like, I'll say this. The Frostbite uh, 3 engine is actually really good it's just uh, I'm not expecting them to really look unique from each other that's my big problem yeah I'm, ex- I'm expecting and kind of like the big problem with the unreal engine oh what happened with that so many developers use that engine because it's really easy to use and it and if used correctly it can produce some really good looking stuff problem is not many developers take advantage of either of that. That and the Unreal Engine, or the current one, has a couple of problems, like with textures loading and stuff and all that. There's plenty of games that have that problem. I'm just expecting the next Star Wars game to be um, Battlefield Star Wars Edition. Oh, well, you know what? Which they is basically a... Battlefront. <laughs> yeah. Only in the well, first person. Ooh. Well, Battlefront 2 actually had first person. Yeah, it had first person, and there was going to be a Battlefront 3, but then cancelled and just like, oh, throw that away. Oh. If on the off chance that it's good, then, well, that's good, because I did like some of EA games back in the past, but, you know, it's not on the team what it is. So I, I wanted to give them a chance, just... Don't be screwed this up either. This news article is, uh... I can't believe we actually missed this for a couple of weeks. Um, I'm pretty sure we didn't even mention it, like, way back, because this article at least dates back to, um, April 20th, which I'm surprised we missed in a podcast, but I guess, whatever, we'll mention it now. Um, I'm pretty sure a bunch of people were aware before they even watched this. Nintendo is not having a press conference at E3 this year. Oh. Yeah. I, I, um, I heard a little bit about that. Can you elaborate? Well, from what I can gather, since they're really not announcing any new hardware since the Wii U's out on the market and 
they obviously have the 3DS out still. They're pretty much mostly going to focus on software this year. And considering how well the Nintendo Direct uh, stuff has been going, they're going to be doing a couple of those as well, at least before E3. They're still going to E3. There's just It's not going to be a big stage show where there's a bunch of people mimicking a Kinect with games that don't even fucking work, controllers just connecting during obligatory Call of Duty presentation, which is going to happen again for Microsoft. It's pretty much a fucking given. It's not the only thing they can play their cards with. New Call of Duty game. You know, the only game that sells Xboxes, I guess. <laughs> Forget that it's multi-platform. It's an Xbox machine, all right. Uh, and according to Awada, he says, um, at, E3, at the E3 show this year, we are planning to host a few smaller events that are specifically focused on our software lineup for the U.S. market. There will be one closed event for American distributors, and we will hold another closed hands-on experience event for mainly the Western gaming media. A, a lot of people um, are saying this is a bad thing, but I'm kind of for it. I mean, why would you want to hold a big press conference if the only thing you're really going to want to show is games? Like, you don't have new hardware or anything. Like, there's nothing new to add. So why bother putting a big presentation when it's like, well, we got this game that comes out, this time. we got this game that comes out. With Xbox and PlayStation 4, they obviously have new hardware to talk about. That makes sense. But with Nintendo just not having a press conference is actually not a bad decision, honestly. I think Nintendo finally took a step back and looked back at some of the E3s of the past. Namely for when, like, they don't have hardware to show. Not just them, but, like, Microsoft and Sony. Just take Microsoft last year. Okay, we have a few games, but we don't have new hardware to show. Let's spend 25 minutes talking about the social media, sports, TV, bullshit, extra languages. Unnecessary stuff. Then we'll bring out Joe Montana, have him hold a controller, pretend he's playing Madden, and then we'll have Usher do a song. Sure. In other words... Rida with his criticism shield. In other words, anything but video games. At a video game conference. As a little addition to this article, this is a little more recent development in um, ha- what exactly Nintendo's going to be doing. They apparently, they're apparently hosting a Come Play With Us at the Wii U Software <laughs> Showcase event. What a great name. A Come <laughs> Play With Us at the Wii U Software Showcase event. It'll uh. be at their E3 booth, and Nintendo of America president and COO Reggie Fizami and Shigeru Miyamoto will both be given presentations, after which the press will get to play the upcoming lineup through a unique hands-on experience time with the games that Nintendo's booth before the show floor opens to all of them. And that's going to take place on June 11th. Well, I do have to agree with Nintendo's decision on this one. I mean, the Wii U needs a uh, game badly. And, you know, they don't really have anything spectacular to present other than, hey, we got video games. We promise we got video games coming, so we'll show you the video games. Actually, Unreal, and since you mentioned that? Reggie, can, can I mention what happened as far as the, like, uh, hierarchy of Nintendo of America? Yeah, that would be important, because I did say COO. Well... Uh, Reggie is still the COO, but there's a new CEO of Nintendo of America. Anyone care to guess who it is? Uh, The base god, basically. Yep. Banana Man himself, Satoru Iwata, the global president of Nintendo, is now also the CEO of Nintendo of America. Hmm. Now, for those of you who don't know what that means, basically, Reggie answers directly to Iwata. So the Triforce is actually complete now. Pretty and much, then there yes. Was that one, and then there was that one Pikmin picture. I feel like a purple Pikmin. I just got slightly demoted. Stuff like, you know, stuff like this actually makes me really wish I could attend an E3. But it's all the way in California, and fuck California. Also, how long would you last before walking yeah. out? Um, if 
the Microsoft conference makes me like piss myself in laughter. I think it'd be worth the price of admission. <laughs> no matter how bad it is. Then again, we get E3 at home, but it's not the same. I, I wouldn't mind going around the show floor, and with the Nintendo event, I want to be near Reggie and friggin' Miyamoto. I know that sounds weird, but... <laughs> you better be ready. <laughs> All I want but... is to be next to you! <laughs> oh, it, it should be something else to meet them, though, basically. Oh, it's not impossible, it's just not right now. By the time I'm 40, they'll probably be dead. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Maybe gaming will be dead next year. Well, in that case, I would have a second plan to move on to something else. Then. Since we mentioned E3, Microsoft's revealing the next Xbox on May 21st. Oh, great. Right before we go to Anime North, before... so we'll be thinking about that all weekend. So I have to deal with that before going to Anime North. That may spoil my entire trip. I may just be mad through the whole thing now. Think Wait, of it as you. your rite of passage to Canada. Way to ruin my trip. <laughs> asshole. Well, the nice trip, assholes. Actually, you know what's funny, Unreal? I have another news story that ties back to alien colonial marines. Aw, oh, shit. Uh, oh, shit. Remember TimeGate Studios? Sort of. That company that Gearbox said, okay, here's here's aliens, make a game for it. We're busy with Borderlands 2, just slap together something in five months. Well, Speaking they filed for way. they filed for chapter eleven bankruptcy. Not surprised. Here's my favorite part. Uh, total liabilities from ten million to fifty million dollars. Those claiming to be owed money include Epic Games, Agora Games, DJ2 Entertainment, and here's my favorite part, and a local pizza shop asking for $34.80. What? That's... That, that's what it says. <laughs> well, you... Well, if they owe them money, then... Yeah, but of all the things to put down on Chapter 11 bankruptcy, like, I didn't pay the pizza shop. I guess they thought they were celebrating that night and figured they'll have the money to pay for it by then. Uh, we're already so far in debt. What's another thirty-four dollars eighty cents? Okay, and this oh. will be my last note for news. So I think we're all familiar with uh, Keyboard Cat and Nyan Cat, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kind of important. Yeah. No, I mean someone's eventually gonna expose you to it. Well, the owners of those memes are suing Warner Brothers. Whoa, this happened. Wow. Yep. That just happened. You're gonna love the reason. Uh, yeah, the, the reason they're suing them is because in one of these Scribblenauts games, there are things that you can like put into the game to bring up things that kinda sorta look like Keyboard Cat and Yan Cat. Oh, I see where this is going. Oh, and this quote just hurts my brain. Schmidt and Torres are the guys who own Keyboard Cat and Yan Cat like the memes. This is what they said in the filing. The WB logo is also a meme, even though it's only two letters inside the outline of a shield. I don't Wait, think that's what? how it works. What? I need to hear that again. The WB logo is also a meme? Y yeah, that's, that's not a meme. What? Are you... What's a meme? I mean, can you clarify that? A miserable for... internet pile of... <laughs> can you clarify that to me one more time? It just sounded so stupid, I, it kind of left my brain. Wait, wait, wait. Warner Brothers is a meme. The, the, the WB logo is a meme. What? That's what they're saying. Well, what about kids WB? Oh, they're probably dead. On that headache, can we get away from gaming news, please? Let's go ahead and look at some upcoming releases. Because maybe that'll get my mind off of Yan Cat and Keyboard Cat and how their owners are dicks. Actually, coming out relatively soon, we have the limited edition for Metro Last Light. I... I still miss the HQ. Okay, getting away from dead companies. The port for Resident Evil Revelations is coming soon to 
360, and PS3. And Wii U. All right. And PC. Won't be getting it until maybe after Anime Wars. All my money's going to that. I'm putting out a rental through Gamefly on the Wii U version. Now, coming yeah, out, out the- at the end of May, and Unreal, I know you've explained this to me before, but I completely forgot, what is Fuse? Oh, um, it's a game. Next. Okay. Oh, by the way, SDR, were you going to get the Last of Us, the Survivor Edition? Actually, I might, since that does come out in the middle of June. Hopefully I'll have enough yeah, money for that. Yeah, Hopefully you'll have and, a PSN ID by then. Probably not. And and also, it's kind of getting sold out really quickly. But. Well, that's the thing, because I also want to get this other game that's coming out at the beginning of June, Remember Me. I'm just glad that the guy from Other M finally got his own game. Seriously, you got his own game? That joke is no. tired. Next. Uh, oh, right, this exists. End of June, Deadpool, the game. Oh, yes. Not really sure what to say about that. Yeah, I, 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 I don't even. I don't know too much about the character besides watching some videos of playing Marvel's Capcom 3 sometimes and, exactly. pretty much, and pretty much loving the character. I just know this guy, like, breaks the fourth wall and does mercenary work. Yeah, he breaks the fourth wall all the damn time. And you also see him at conventions a lot of time, too. Sometimes wearing a maid outfit. Exactly. Voiced by Nolan North. And I might as well throw this out there. End of June, 3DS, Project X Zone, Cross Zone, Limited uh, Edition. Yes. However you pronounce that. I... Dialogue the game. I have to take a look into that game, but I played the previous ish game. And I like how it played out, so. Alright, that's about all I have for upcoming releases. Now, what have we acquired recently? Hold on. I'm going to slap my arm, and based on how much it hurts, that'll determine who goes first. <clears throat> Jeez, self-abuse? Come on, man. <laughs> Angel. <laughs> well, must hurt that badly, huh? I got a few games lately. Um, I decided to purchase my own copy of uh, Sonic All-Stars Racing Transformed on the Wii U. So, you know, I figured... It's a spiritual my... successor to Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, now, it is fun to play, when you, especially when you're doing multiplayer. And I love... Which we haven't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, but I, I can probably name which game has been doing that. Skip, next. I like, although I will mention that I do like how the Wiimote says two players, we can have up to five. And I got a couple of DS games. Uh, thanks to Shadow Snake 123, I got my own copy of Hotel Dust Room 215. Oh, yes, it's a pretty nice game. And I also ordered uh, from Amazon a Tetris DS. I played this game a long time ago, never had my own copy of it. And I decided that I wanted a Tetris game on the, on my DS or 3DS to play. And I did not want any of the newer ones. I wanted the one that's Nintendo themed. Yeah, that, that was actually a pretty good uh, Tetris game. I played it on a um, skiing trip on the bus ride, so... Yeah, I love this game so much. First time I got to playing it again, I beat Marathon Mode. And uh, just now, right before we started the podcast, I decided to buy Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon on Steam. Can you run it? No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the game's out. I haven't played it yet. But... Well, if you have it until you get a better PC. But it should run. I have the text for it. And if I don't, I can always drive down to Altex. They have some strong graphics cards that can go up to maybe $500. Yeah, holy shit, that's strong. Stronger than before. Oh, um, that's about it for me for today. All right, hold on. I got to do this again. <clears throat> Unreal. Okay. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay.
originally I wasn't gonna get a lot of games, but then shit happened and I ended up coming home with too many. First off, um, the Wii U had the 30 cent thing still going on for their Famicom anniversary, so I got Kirby's Adventure on the Virtual Console for that. Mm -hmm. Then I utilized my GameStop Power Up Rewards and got um, $20 worth of Microsoft points so I can buy Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Everyone's out for the blood of the dragon. I'm not gonna sing it. I can't, no, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. If anything, it may be um, downloadable game of the year already. That's all I'm going to say. There are a lot of factors going into that, though. I originally wasn't going to do this, but apparently GameStop brought out a bunch of PS2 games, all used again. So because of that, I decided to take advantage of that. So in terms of disc only, which is what they tend to have in terms of like the lowest price possible. I got Jack and Daxter and I got the Transformers PS2 game. The Armada game? Yep, the Armada game. Good man. Now if only you found Jetfire. Never. I think he's just gone for good. And since it was buy to get one uh, free, Jack and Daxter ended up being um, the free game because the other PS2 game I bought, which did have a case of instructions, uh, the first Kingdom Hearts. I just hope it holds up. And this was pretty cheap on the PSP, but I got Wipeout Pure. So I have, I believe, both Wipeout games on the P PSP now. And then after that, I stopped by the pawn shop and got Super R-Type for $6 for the Super Nintendo. Ah, uh, R-Type. I still have that game. Never beat it on anything higher than DC. I That would have been it, but a couple of days ago, or just for the whole weekend, by the time we're doing this, there was a Star Wars Steam sale. And I couldn't ignore it, especially with the prices shown. So I think I ended up getting, I need to count, one, two, three, four, I ended up getting six Star Wars games that weekend. Ah, what were the games? Uh, Star Wars Dark Forces, Jedi Knight Dark Forces 2, and its expansion Mysteries of the Sith, Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast, Jedi Knight Jedi Academy, and... Republic Commando. All games except for Republic Commando I want to play, because I've never played this before. Republic Commando, I own. I kind of missed the sale, because there were a couple of Star Wars games I was thinking about trying out. I mean, I really didn't want to do it, because I still wanted to save for Anime North, but the prices That's were really low, so I'm just like, fuck. And then when I try Dark Forces, um, I'm not happy with how DOSBox is working. The colors are all messed up and shit, but I guess there's a fix for it. Uh, no, it's just... <laughs> you just like random yellow and red on human faces or white spots all over uh, the main guy's face in cutscenes. Yeah, it, that doesn't look bad. Just... But apparently there is a fix. I forget what the fix is. I'll figure it out some other day. Alongside Battlefront 2 and Knights of the Old Republic, I have, like, eight Star Wars games on Steam now. And I believe that's it. I don't think I got anything else outside of the stuff I listed. Okay, I'll go ahead and go next, because my list is going to be very short. I only have four games, actually. First of all, I did the same thing Unreal did with, uh... Wait, was it Unreal or Angel that did Kirby's Adventure? That was me. Okay, that was you. I did that too, because, you know, 30 cents, why not? And also, I wound up getting Puddle, which is basically fluidity, but it's not. And then I also wound up getting two PS2 games. One I got is called Stolen. Which, as far as I can tell, is like a thief game, except in the future. 
and probably that's, not as good. That sounds really familiar. I know. That that's almost, that's that kind of why I got think, it. Yeah, it does sound familiar. It also makes me think of uh, Deus Ex, the first one. But yeah. Oh, oh, I think I remember this now. I'm pretty sure I Don't saw an me. X play review. I saw an X play review on it. Uh, they didn't give it a good score. <laughs> but we'll see how you think. Whatever. I haven't listened to X play in s actually since ever. Moving on. <laughs> and uh, the other game I got also for the PS2, and it's called Lifeline. Is that the I one where you knew could... it? You is that the I one where you have to use it. voice commands? Yes, it is. Ah, hey. I want to see that because I heard if you tried speaking English, it works better. I had a feeling it was like one when you brought that up with the voice command shit like a couple of days ago. By the way, note for anyone trying to play this game: it says headset required, but a Rock Band mic works too. Because it's That's... USB. Yes. But I am walking. I am walking. Oh. Stop. Uh, I, I want to bring up the X. I want to bring up X Play again because they did a great segment on Lifeline where it was just Adam trying to get it work and he was just getting frustrated. Well, oh, I'm actually man. having no problem getting it working. Maybe the Rock Band mic actually picks up better than the stupid PS2 headset. Maybe that's the difference. Or mm, maybe. Maybe you are speaking English. Who knows? I kind of doubt that, but that's all I got. So, Wiz? Uh, okay. Let's see, I also didn't get that many games that I was trying to remember. I got Fire Emblem Awakening, or as Angel uh, remembers it, Watercrest Slumber, Sin and Punishment for the Wii for four ninety nine. And, oh right, we were talking about Borderlands 2 earlier. Yeah, I got that recently too, because it was really, really cheap. I was like, eh, might as well. I mean, I, I should have saved, but it was so cheap. I was like, ah, I was going to get it anyway. Yeah, those were the games. But I mean, I'm trying to save money for North, that's why I'm holding off more. I think that's what we're all trying to do. Yeah. Just, I'm doing a terrible job at it. But... We have no self-control. And on that point, let's go into our discussion topic. Spin-offs. Aw, oh, shit. Hmm, that depends. Now, there have been a lot of really good games that have been the result of spin-offs, but at what point do you go too far? Uh, for me, I think I would say sports game. Really? For me, because, uh, well, I'd rather place other things, like, uh, not counting stuff like racing games, um, I'm thinking in terms of, like, the, like the Mario spin-off game. You mean, like, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf, Mario Strikers? Yeah, those, like, I think that's a little far, like, it, it's probably not the far thing, but I would say that's a little far, like, I don't mind Mario Kart, I don't mind their puzzle games. I don't mind their RPGs, because they had really good RPGs, too. Um, actually, as long as it's good, then I don't really mind. Scott, you should be familiar with this. I'm um, Guitar Hero. Mm -hmm. oh, 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 oh. Wait, how'd, yeah. that, how'd that get a spin-off? Well, let's list them. Aerosmith, Metallica, Van Halen, On Tour, oh. On Tour Decades, On Tour, whatever. Oh, that counts. Okay, well, next. Yeah. I mean, I'm not counting stuff like World Tour, because that's technically the fourth installment, because after that, it went five, and then uh, Warriors of We Killed This Franchise. Uh, what about Lego Rock Band? I I'm sticking with Guitar Hero. Oh, wait, wait, wait. That's right. That's right. Never mind. Sorry. But Rock Band does have spin-offs as well. Um, it had Green Day, Beatles, Lego, and Unplugged on the PSP. I may be missing some because there were... Well, Rock Band 2 and 3, I believe, had handheld releases. Actually, no, I don't think Rock Band 2 did. Maybe that's what, what Unplugged was. 
Well, Rockman 3 had handheld, but that doesn't count. Mainly because um, it is just a different version of a numbered installment. With Guitar Hero, it is completely different on the handheld. Like, different titles, different track lists, not really based off anything, and it uses a peripheral for the DS where you hold it sideways and strum it fucking dumb. Oh yeah, that. Just, yeah. Oh yeah, you can only play that on the DS. You can't play it on any of uh, the newer DS. No, I think of the DS... Wait. Uh, I'm not that... sure how that peripheral works. Like, it plugs yeah. into the GBA slot. Yeah. Which, I, I would assume it would work on a light, but... Yeah, it, wor it works on a light, but after that, they got rid of the GBA slot. To yeah, something and so yeah, so it doesn't work on later. I don't know why, but I was considered like later DS is like light onwards, but whatever. I mean, with Guitar Hero, they varied in quality. I mean, to be honest, um, I actually thought the Metallica spinoff um, was actually pretty good. The Van Halen spinoff was absolutely fucking terrible, which is insulting because Van Halen is a great band. It's just they did the absolutely everything wrong. The lesson here is don't let Wolfgang pick songs. And the lesson is don't disrespect Sammy Hagar, you fucking snobs. It wasn't that bad. Come on. You know what David Lee Roth did on his own, right? Make the fucking music videos that broke my brain within five seconds. He's just a gigolo. <laughs> <laughs> and you hope you uh... So, when it comes to spinoffs, it, like, it can be done well or done poorly, and I think the Guitar Hero franchise was pretty much the big example, but Guitar Hero had problems of oversaturation of the market, and that's a completely different issue. Yeah, that's another thing, too, is, like, what weighs into, like, how well executed and how well received the spinoff will be. Uh, I guess you could say as long as something good comes out of the spin-off, then it's okay to do it. So, um, what about Mortal Kombat Puzzle? I thought that was just a mode in one of the Mortal Kombat. Oh, wait, 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 that's right. Um, geez, I remember did that. You're making, I think you're thinking Street Fighter, because that was a standalone thing. Super that possible. was all, that was, yeah, that was definitely. Unless you're oh. talking Street Fighter 2010. Oh wait, but th didn't Mortal Kombat have like Mortal Kombat cards? Or was that also a That was another mode. I think they, those were all in the same game. Okay, yeah, then that doesn't count. No, you want to talk Mortal Kombat spin-offs? How about Mythology, Sub-Zero? Or, or Special uh, Forces? Jack. Or Shaolin Monk? I think Shaolin Monk was okay, but... Yeah, that was a pretty good spin-off. I don't even want to be reminded that I actually played Mythologies back then. Oh. Yeah, I, just, I saw, like, a, a speed run of it. It's... Oh, wow, that was just shitty. It's not just a myth. The shittiness is real. I guess I should uh, say that spinoffs to me, and by extension, a uh, general definition, would be something that anyone can play. Like, you don't need to know the main games in order to understand the side games. Now, taking Metal Gear Solid, for example, there are a couple, there are a few side games that are, well, unnecessary to the plot, uh, mainly, mainly the Metal Gear Acids 1 and 2. And some of them like to take on different gameplay archetypes, like Metal Gear Acid had a focus in card battle, and Resident Evil Gaiden had a more emphasis on sort of adventure RPG style gameplay. I say RPG because of something that acts like random encounters or sort of, but not quite. I, I know what you mean, but and I don't have a problem with spinoffs, mainly because it's a nice way to get into a video game franchise. It might be on different systems. It might encourage people to want to get into a franchise in general. Kind of like a uh kind of like an introduction-ish to their to the universe of that franchise. I like to think of it as a, a perspective 
and a different perspective onto that franchise. Like there was also a Metal Gear Solid game on Game Boy that the Tower. actually that was Color uh, Tower of Battle. Now in Japan it was called Ghost Battle, while in oh. while elsewhere it was Metal Gear Solid, possibly to help sell more units. Since Metal Gear Solid was a big thing at the time. And yes, it was a very different game. Well, in terms of story, where where the only stand, where the only canonical standing was taking place after the first game, but that, but it's non-canon. It was a different take. A different take. Like you'll see, so, like side side games could be like side stories of different characters. It could be different interpretations of events, all that sort of thing. And some of them can. Uh, can have original or interesting, interesting ways they intertwine with the overall franchise. Like the Zel- like the Zelda Ages. The, no, I'm sorry, the Zelda Oracle game, where you can play either ages or seasons in either order. Would you call that a spinoff? Because well, um, it's kind of hard to dictate where it does fit in in the Zelda timeline. And yeah, that's, that, that's that's why I bring it up because it's like it doesn't. Quite followed, but yeah, I, I, I'd rather not bring in the Zelda timeline. It's complicated enough as it is. <laughs> get rid of, get rid of it. But it's a bad game. But let's not get into that. And and you know, side stories are a great way for, for for franchises to experiment with different gameplay styles and different story takes, different characters. Uh, different things to work with without having it affect affect the main the main franchises. It's another kind of experimental and exploration. Yeah, another example I would like to say is the uh, Castlevania games on N sixty four, where it was where it was three D with sort of a classic Castlevania feel, but still very different overall gameplay for better or worse. And uh, also, hey, don't forget the Metroidvania games. I I would say those kind of count. Um, oh, so far only Circle of the Moon would count. Every oh. every single one of those types of games, with the exception of Circle of the Moon, is considered canon. You know, Wiz, you're saying that actually reminded me of a spinoff that I really like, and which frankly I need to get back to, the Metroid oh. Prime series. Wasn't well, wasn't the Prime series canon? Yes, I don't. Yeah, they're, they're, they're canon. They take place before Super Metroid. I think Pinball is the better example of a spinoff. Yeah, 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 that is. Well, I'm thinking spinoff in terms of, like, execution of gameplay. Mm, yeah, that's mm. also, also something. It's also a good way to, like I said, to experiment. And another example would be the Resident Evil Chronicle game, where or, there's a bunch of Resident Evil spinoffs that I wasn't going to mention. Outbreak, I, Survivor, Dead Aim. I I can go. Sorry, Survivor's canon. I'm sorry. I can go in a lot about these Resident Evil games since I played almost every single one of these uh, spinoffs, including Outbreak, on a consistent basis until internet went off for it. Uh, the Chronicle games I also really liked since they summarized the overall plots of each of different Resident Evil games as well as introduced new storylines. While also being pretty fun for rail shooters, even though yeah. even though I really hated the shaky cam and dark side console. Whoa, zombie! Whoa! It's not like you've seen them fifty times. Whoa. Okay, we're going very close. We're going very close. Oh my God, we're spazzing out. Oh shit! I dropped my gun. <laughs> yeah, that's oh. a fire gun. Oh, where's that street secret? What? It's at the very back of the room. How was I supposed to know? I dropped my gun. Better get my knife. Get the leeches off my face. Mm. Ah, what are we, Siamese twins? Why, why are you, I'm getting hurt for you getting hurt? Mm. And there are also some spin-offs uh, going on with a whole different perspective or different takes of the world. I recall, I recall two Bionic Commando games that were on the Game Boy console. Uh, one of which that's basically the same thing as the NES game, only with a more, um, wait, let's shoot. How could I say this? A uh, cyberpunk theme, or I don't think cyberpunk is the best way to describe it. More futuristic, if you will. And then there's also Bionic Commando, something something on Game Boy Color, which gave you two different protagonists to play with. 
which also pretty much has the same plot, just different ways to tell it, as well as as well as uh, reworking the gameplay, making it more robust. Um, a lot of the spin-offs I've noticed are mostly on portable consoles. Like, we had Metal Gear Solid, we also got a Metal Gear Solid game on Game Boy Color, we had Bionic Commando, Bionic Commando on the Game Boy console. We had Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Acid on the PSP console. I am going to consider Portable Ops a spin-off. Uh, I it, thought that took place after MGS3. I'm just going to say this, it's debatable, because I didn't like Portable Ops that much, and it seems as if Peace Walker wants to forget about Portable Ops. If uh, Miller's comment of, we can leave all the crap from San Antonio Bay behind us, is any indication. Oh, subtle. I, that. I, I kind of liked uh, Portable Ops. I haven't played too much of it, but I enjoyed it when I was playing it. But, uh, the story wasn't very good, and multiplayer sucked. It's supposed to be multiplayer focused, too. Uh, another thing with spinoffs. I bought spinoffs of uh, games that don't have multiplayer, but now do in these spinoffs. Outbreak being one of the examples. I can't think of many examples, honestly. In terms of one game, I, I don't know if I would want to call it a spinoff, though. I mean, it definitely seems like it is. Um, it, the recently released Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon pretty much has nothing to do with Far Cry 3 outside of its base gameplay. But, uh, everything, but everything else is completely different. I, I can see where you're going, but isn't that like more of an expansion? But then again, It's a standalone yeah. game. If it was DLC, I wouldn't have uh, like mentioned it, but it's standalone. You don't need Far Cry 3, so... That's why I want to consider it a spin-off, but I'm well, not too sure. Well, it, it, if, it has, if, it, if it has nothing to do with the main game, it's just like... It's just it has nothing to do with the main ca- game. Yeah, the I, characters I guess are completely I, different. Uh, the setting is different. I like to I like to say that it is, since it, yeah, is, the sa- have, it is the same base gameplay, but with, a, but with a different take on the said gameplay. Like, what if Far Cry 3 suddenly was about the 80s and became super ridiculous? What if it was in What if we made a better game than Far Cry 3? <laughs> and made it cheaper, too. I think that for me, when you're talking about spin-offs, and when I say spin-off, I mean like uh, story-style style spin-off, gameplay-style spin-off, whatever. There's like three things that you have to pay attention to, and believe me, some of these are way more important than others. But like, appropriateness for what you're doing? Now, I'm not saying this is a good game, but Soul Calibur Legends. When you think about the basic premise of Soul Calibur, it actually does make sense to try and do like an adventure-style format with that. But the most important thing with the spin-offs is execution, which wasn't really there. And another thing that you have to bear in mind is a certain degree of faithfulness. And when I say faithfulness, I particularly have in mind a game like Castlevania Judgment. You know, one where they just take the character designs and just like throw them out a window and say, Death Note guy, make this. And then you got Maria talking about tits, and then Grant is like, I don't even know what the hell he was doing. It's like, one, it's like one of my Japanese anime. Oh, that's my uncle. But there is a game that was released relatively recently that I think hits on most of these points in a positive way. Uh, Persona 4 Arena. Yeah. I mean, Persona, if you just play like one of the regular Persona games, you don't think, yeah, fighting game, let's do that. And when you actually play it, they stay faithful to all the characters, they stay faithful to the universe that Persona creates. If they were in a, in a fighting game. Yeah, precisely. And they actually have kind of a clever reason for why they're fighting each other. Well, then that's good. Then they actually care. For, you know, a spin-off, it's not... It's, uh, it's just... It's like a, it's a branching path off the main path. It's related to it, but not quite onto it. 
Yeah. I could talk about games I would consider a spin-off, like Dead Rising 2 off the record, which technically is a different take on the main game. Oh, um... How many Dead Rising 2, Chuck's not popular be, enough. How many how many Castlevania games would be considered spin-offs? Alright, let me go let me go through. Uh, oh jeez. Aside from judgment, there's sixty there's a sixty-four game. Then you have then you had, I guess you could consider the Game Boy the Game Boy games as well. Uh what about the um, PS2 games? Um they were experimentations, but I can't really I can't really say for sure since they are considered canon within in the overall story line. Or in the I, I can't even follow the Castlevania story arc. There's just like, all right, here's a different Belmont. Go kill shit. Wait, it's not a Belmont. Uh, go kill Dracula. Wait, it's always not even a vampire him. hunter. Go kill Dracula. And then the Dracula was Belmont. <laughs> Fuck you. And then and then yeah. the and then the son of Dracula wants to kill him too. It's all Dracula. Dracula. And that's what it was all about. And then other things happen. Buy two Draculas, get one free. Oh yeah, there was a two-in-one pack Castlevania game on the PS, I think. Oh, it you're was right. GBA. I forgot all yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, there's that too. Which I happen to own. Would crossovers count as spin-offs? Mm. That depends. Would you count Fighters Mega Mix? Uh, yeah, I'd say those would which, count. Which has characters from both Virtual Fighters and Fighting Vipers, as well as a handful of characters from other Sega fighting games, like, yeah, a, that like a car from Daytona USA, a couple of characters from, from uh, Virtual Fighter Kids, a character from Dynamite Cop, or Virtual Cop, I'm sorry. And some... What, no time cop? And some panda or bear that has only one, that has only an idle animation and that's it. And in a, and Pepsi Man in a Japanese version, I think. <laughs> Pepsi Man. Actually, actually, I think it's in Biting Vipers 2 in Japan. Complete, yeah, that counts. I mean, it's a crossover. Complete with his own Pepsi Man tune when he, when he wins the match. Pepsi Man. Yeah, I think this discussion's pretty much winding down. I think it's gone off the main path long enough. Yeah, eventually it's going to have its own spinoff. Oh, gee, what, a spinoff of a this podcast? Or? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be horrible. Isn't that what the blonde cast was? It's unreleased episode. Actually, yeah. that's a good point. This whole entire podcast has its spinoff and then its main cast. Yeah, Does okay, that mean we'll like, have to get two panels at Anime North now? It's where we don't host anymore. We're the guests. It's like in this. It's like in this podcast. What happens if it was Unreal SDR and Zero Master and um, uh, Oni? Wait, that what if I wasn't here? Does that mean that was... every podcast is a spinoff of itself? Oh my god! Oh no! We're in a spinoff of a spinoff of a spinoff. We're going to be spinning out of our graves or in our graves, and it's going to be a spinoff too. Oh, this is terrible! Terribly and, funny. Uh, okay. Stop talking about spin-offs. Let's move on. Yo, go, dog. go, go, go before it spawns another one. We're spinning off of spin-offs and we're spinning into viewer questions. Oh, thank God. And then that has a spin-off of its own. And I might as well start with this one. It's from our old buddy. Ah, uh, go, go! When is he going to get a spin-off of comment? A spin like his own comment section spin-off? Or... Fuck it. <laughs> Let's um, just do the question. We'll just call it the Akago section. Akago we'll asks, are there any... Yeah. Are there any games you've had in your collection for X number of years that you've always been meaning to get around to properly playing, but haven't yet? Yeah, I have like 20. <laughs> I have oh, several. Yeah. But, I mean, when you're a gamer, you're bound to have that happen. Let's see, there's about uh, 75% of my entire Steam library, uh, two-thirds of every game on my shelf. You know, I'll throw out a few specifics for this one. I have three in particular that come to mind. Two, because they're still in the shrink wrap. And those two are No More Heroes 2 and Brutal Legend. 
brutal legends with and, Jack Black. And probably the one I'm most embarrassed about not properly playing yet, Chrono Trigger. <laughs> Can I borrow I, that? It's all I, 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 for Earth now. Fuck I, you. I didn't finish playing that game either. I stopped at the Vampire Mansion. Oh god. But the future refused to change. SDR still doesn't have a PS on it. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Technically, I, I did beat the game, but just not uh, through one of the endings I wanted to see. It's like history is repeating itself, repeating itself, repeating itself, <laughs> repeating itself, repeating itself. Guys, I have a history with Chrono Trigger. Um, I played a Super Nintendo game up to the part where I finished the future uh, scene. Well, but first, it never refused to change. Like, before you go into the time gate, I think. Ah, uh, limited. How can oh. you go in the time gate? They file for bankruptcy. <laughs> and, then, and, then some, and then for some reason I guess because of school I stopped playing this was when I was little then I would go back to it again and stop right there and go back to it again and stop like there this time on an emulator and then I would get and then I would uh, have a Playstation game that I uh, borrowed from a friend Cross. and uh, no but no Chrono Trigger and I got and this time I tried to run 100% it where I got to the Dark Nova Fortress, I think is what it's called. Uh, did not bother to start it at all, and therefore did never continue the game from there. And ever since then, I just stopped bothering. It's one of those games where you just got to keep going, because if you stop for too long, you just forget what you're doing, and you lose your train of thought, and then it's just, oh. Uh... So you Frasier, basically, when you come back after a while. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get it. Hey, what to do we do? Awesome. What do we do? I don't remember what the fuck we're doing. Other games I can think of I have not bothered to finish. Um, any Zelda game that isn't Ocarina of Time or Majora's Mask. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> any sports games I had that isn't Blitz or Jam. Um, those... Don't catch my flame, Jam. Sports game, eh, not... Really? Yeah. Really Especially if you've got like a hockey game or a baseball game where there's like over a hundred games to play through. Or will you spend time just punching people out? Um, in terms of games that's been sitting on my shelf, um, let's see, there's one game I showed off in the stream once and I had absolutely no idea what to do in it, so I just quit and left it on my shelf ever since. Where do I go? What do I do? I quit. Uh, believe me, it's for a good reason. You remember Dark Angel? You mean that... Based on the show? TV show? No. Okay, I think. no. Wait. No. It's a game where as soon as you start, it just puts you in combat immediately. No explanation. What's that for? Yes, it. Is there a subtitle to the game? Vamp... I now look it up. It's Vampire Apocalypse. There you go. <laughs> what? What the... <laughs> It's the one where you begin and the game immediately begins. Wow, that looks like shit. Just look at the fucking cover. It kind of, it, it kind of is. I left it on my. Looks like a, this looks like an alternate Dark Reaver game. Uh, I, I like how the first video I find is Dark Angel Vampire Apocalypse. What is this game? <laughs> like, he it's exactly my reaction. Other games I basically bought and just threw on my shelf is uh, Advent Rising, Arctic Thunder, Dead or Alive Ultimate 1. That was a gift from us. Uh, um, basically, Doom 3 Resurrection, I think. Resurrection yeah, of Evil. Yeah, yeah, Resurrection of Evil. Silent Scope Complete. The Unreal Championship game without warning. Other games include Ten Yard Fight, Blaster Master, Castlevania 3. And the list goes on. There's also a Law and Order game I have on PC. And I'll stop right there. Yeah, it, it was getting a little long. I have, I definitely have quite a bit to list, but I'm just going to only list a couple. I don't want to count the games I listed in recent pickups, because I just got them. Um, but stuff I've had for a while, I'm just going to glance back and... Um, Let's see. Okay, Fallout New Vegas is one of them. I haven't even opened it since I got it I last year's it. Black Friday. Uh, I guess I could count Metal Gear Solid 3. Yeah, you've only played the monkey mode. Yeah, that's about it. 
Etrian Odyssey 4 is a game I have on 3DS, and I haven't played it yet. Nino Kuni is another great example. It's just been sitting there unopened. Those are just a couple of games. Like, I, I, I could list so many that I haven't finished. Like, both Bot and Kaido's games are another example. I just, a lot of games I've been picking up, I just haven't been able to get through or even finish. That's just been sitting here. Like, I never have the time, or I'm not really in the mood for some of them. I guess that's what happens when you start becoming a collector, which is, uh, yeah. It's like reading an entire library of books. You just can't get to all of them in time. That and some games are, definitely take longer to beat than others, which is why I'm still not done with Xenoblade. I haven't played that in a while. Uh, yeah, there's just way too many for me to list. The, the, everything I just said are pretty much the most concrete examples I can come up with at this time. And outside of that, well... Unless you want to visit my house and look at slash steal my games, then you'll get a better idea. The Unreal Tour. So this is my house. Look at my tiny room. It's like a closet. Here's my drawer of a bunch of random Power Ranger stuff. <laughs> I have go stay on the wall because I felt like it. That's my um, pretty much input on that. Way too many to list. Okay, I'll list the one... I have a few more, but I'll list the ones uh, that I feel are worth listing. And I'll give a short explanation why I didn't finish it. Um, Pikmin 2. I got frustrated at one point in this one level, and that just turned me off for a bit. Like, I'm, I'm meaning to go, and ba go back to playing it, but um, I haven't gotten to be able to go do that. So. Uh, there was also a shit in punishment on the Wii. I'm counting that because I played it at Unreal House. I want to get around to it, but yeah, other games. There was also Bug Island too. Uh, just stopped at one point and just didn't go back to it. Just didn't mean to it. Just finished it. Fallout New Vegas because Ultimate Edition is kind of fun to keep happy in there. Edition 3, just, just testing it for a bit, but we need to get back to that. Mm. Oh yeah, and the two games Snake recommended to me that I got a that's the last two games, I think. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei, and Double Survivor 2, and the other one with the uh, armor opening coming out on the top. Wait, do you own Resistance 3? Uh, yeah, you saw me buy it at Anime North for 25 bucks. Did the online pass work? It was already used, and I was talking with you uh, about it, I was like, should I just get a new game and then you're like just, just go buy a pad like what's wrong with you and I'm like oh yeah that's true but there yeah, no one needs to play online call well online uh, <clears throat> I have the game well okay I'll just go get an online pass I mean because I saw if, the... if you really want to because if you want the co-op achievements you could just split screen it but I don't know your controller situation I have four controllers now Okay, you can you can pretty much just get everything on your own unless you really want to fork down the money and just pop in. Yeah, I don't think I've tried online co-op because it's uh, invite only type of thing. Oh well, you know if we get around if we get around to playing it, I'll uh, I'll definitely go get it. And... Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of stop there for my list of games. I'll just give one more. Zoid Song because I'm stuck at this one part and I'm just. Freaking frustrated over it, so I don't want to. I, I want to finish it, but I don't want to do that stupid mission from Void Saga. So there are reasons why I haven't finished games, and reason why I didn't get back to it yet. But I want to finish it for reasons. Um. Oh yeah, just one more. Um. Dirty Dot Game Heroes. Trying to find that last magic, uh, magic upgrade. I might just have to do a game plus mode, so I'll just get back to it later. So yeah. All right, well, let's just move on to the next, okay, next series of questions from the Opox. Number one, do you ever have a game that people tell you was the best game ever made, and after playing it, you didn't like it at all? Yes. <clears throat> Absolutely. <laughs> every Call of Duty game ever by Stupid Scrub. Um, every Call of Duty game, every Halo game, every shooter. Like, any person, like, 
Oh, or any mainstream popular games. Well, any like any person like you know doesn't play a wide variety of games and starts saying that shit. I've I've had to deal with that, and I just like, yeah, I'm like I'm deeper in the gaming rabbit hole than they ever will get. Like, I've been exposed to a wide variety of games, and just having that as their bar is already bad enough. But for non-Call of Duty examples, I don't know, honestly. I don't think I've ever really heard the the other blatant examples like um Ocarina of Time and all that stuff like um like after playing it I didn't like like it at all no that's never really happened with me with a couple of those games I think probably the most controversial example of me is maybe the Metal Gear games but I just acknowledge that I suck take that DSP um so it's not the game's fault. It's my incompetence, and I don't, I don't, I don't blame Kojima. I don't tell people to suck my balls. I don't do it. I acknowledge that even if I get angry, I can acknowledge that you know what? I'm not doing anything right. So I'm just gonna set it down and maybe reevaluate or try again in the future. Maybe who knows? But in terms of the question, not really. I think Call of Duty is the most blatant example. That's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Xenosaga Episode 1, next. <laughs> for me, it's... For me, uh, half, of, half of it is based on experiences with... Uh, personal experiences of games, as in uh, how I've hanged out with other people. There's not many people I hang out with that play video games anymore, at least not since high school. And, um... One game we would be playing all the time was Super Smash Bros. Melee. When Brawl came out, they were all pretty convinced that Brawl is pretty much one of the best games they ever played. I'm playing it, and while I do agree it's a pretty it's a pretty fun game to play, uh, with experience, you start to not become so appreciative towards the games because of the people you play with. Like some of them will set their own rules and. And we'll get a lot more competitive, like not the kind of competitive where everyone just like bumps shoulders and be all and be all like I'm better than you as a joke kind of thing, and you know make it all lighthearted. Uh, it's more like I'm better than you and rub their and rub their balls in your face about it, that kind of thing. At the time, I like to say Halo 3, which is kind of funny. Like I do like the game. It's just that it's funny that that was considered like the best thing back when it was released and then like I think a month later uh, Call of Duty 4 came out and suddenly people were like that's the best thing ever lamp shops and then that's pretty much been a common trend with me which is why I tend to not look at pop- like the most popular mainstream games very much like the like Battlefield and Medal of Honor I mean, the only reason I even bothered to get Call of Duty games is honestly by impulse, unless your name is Modern Warfare. And I decided to stop doing that after um, Black Ops 2, because... Uh, I've finished that game myself. Because I stopped caring. But really, the big offender for me, I like to say, and this may be somewhat controversial, Gears of War 1. And it's mainly because a lot of people like to say that it's the best 360 game at the time. Like, add amazing multiplayer, single the player. Multiplayer was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, without taking that into account, um, multiplayer was great. It was great enough to knock Halo 2, knock the Halo 2 player base down a notch. <laughs> you know, back when original Xbox still had Xbox Live. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then and, there's one group of people that just kept playing and kept the server going. Yeah, and, um, you know, I get around, I finally get my own copy, I get around to playing it, and I realize that, wow, the storyline isn't very good. I broke my controller because of Gears. <laughs> like, and my glasses. Oh, my. Yep. They, 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 like, back in the day, they considered that the best thing. This is before Halo 3 was out. That was the best thing. I'm here thinking, um, okay, it's 
not that good of a third person shooter. Like, okay, it has that cinematic visual. And. Brown and black. <laughs> very brown. brown. You know, the standard for next gen games at the time. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thanks. And multiplayer, which was buggy as hell, which still had a lot of bugs in it, even when they tried to fix it. They have like 20 patches? I don't even I'm pretty sure they had more than that. Yeah, and, I think they had a, quite a couple of uh, updates. <laughs> and they considered the best... I'm sorry, but the game was pretty much crap. I mean, it was fun. It had a fun co-op mode, but there were problems with it. Very blatant problems. And it at it, least got better. It, like, it, in it, it did get better. I enjoyed Gears of War 2. I loved Gears of War 3. I haven't played Judgment yet, though. <laughs> but I do like the fact that they improved as it went on. People would argue because they just loved having a shotgun up their Simpsons stick. <laughs> I've heard the same thing also. I was playing a game of Gears 1 online when Gears 2 was out, and someone was complaining that they stopped playing Gears 2 because the shotgun was so underpowered. Like, sorry. I'm like, sorry if there's other weapons. <laughs> Where'd my shotgun go? <laughs> Even in a sniper fight, you'll see people with shotguns. <laughs> I'm dead serious. And people thought, like, that's how you were supposed to play. <laughs> no? That's what you made it out to be, you fucking idiot. I could go on forever. That also, I'm obviously in the minority, but who fucking cares? That also ties, that also ties into my uh, experiences with uh, Melee and Brawl. Like, after a while and stuff like that, you just grow to hate the game because of that. So that's about all I have to say for that. I had a bunch of other games I wanted to say, but I'm just going to list the three that I can think of the top of my head that I didn't think were that great, but everyone's crazy the hell out of it. Um, Chrono Trigger. Everyone loves the hell out of getting that game. I can see why, but uh, I didn't like it that much. I don't hate it, but it just wasn't as good to me as people have said. Same with opening up time. Um... I didn't really like the Sony game. I like the overhead game though, because that was what made it a game. And plus the canyon so like, Everyone plays it on both the time. I can see why I just didn't really like it. Um, the third game. Oh, Final Fantasy VII. I don't. I tried it. I really, really didn't care. It was played so much, it was just like. Oh, this should be the greatest thing ever, and it's the sound that I didn't really see it anymore. Power to you, but I didn't see it. Here are the games that I, I don't know, people love so much, but I don't. And look like this is mainstream. Next one. In a fighting game, do you prefer 3D models like Tekken or Street Fighter, or Street Fighter 4, sorry, or 2D HD sprites? doesn't matter. I mean, both have advantages and disadvantages, obviously. It, I'm not the one to say, because fighting games really aren't my type of thing. I've played both kinds, though. Really, I, I don't prefer one over the other. Three, yeah, there are problems with, like, uh, 3D fighters, like, not functioning well, but they've gotten better. But then again, there are some games that are 3D fighters but only work on a 2D plane as like a crutch or something since they can't really do full three-dimensional fighting that well but choose not to and then with 2D it seems to be a little more I don't want to say simplistic because fighting games definitely have like complex combo systems and stuff I'm just talking about in terms of the dimensions moving like it's just left right up down type of thing diagonal if you want to go that far or side dashing or yeah dashing. but that is basically left and right like on the screen not in conjunction to the player model but on, for me I don't have much to say I don't prefer one over the other as long as they're functional and fun really I'd say for me it's purely from a presentation standpoint like, back in the PlayStation days, and even to a certain degree like PlayStation 2, 
When you had like 3D models for characters, they looked really blocky, and for some of the like really big characters, you could see like where their body segmented in half so that they could do the character animations better. <laughs> Virtual fighter. And uh, another thing about the 3D models is, if you have a fighter that's designed to work in three dimensions, a lot of times what you'll see is like the models clipping into each other in ways that they shouldn't. Like, just in some of the Bloody Roar games, just as an example, Sheena doing her brain buster move, where she lifts someone up on her shoulder and then slams them headfirst into the ground. If you do that on someone like Ganesha in Primal Fury, his entire upper body is going to clip through her when she tries to do that, and it just looks so off. And it, at some point, maybe funny. Yeah, that too. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen with 2D sprites, because you still get that sort of awkward, like, small character doing a move on a big character and it just sync looks issue. Off. Yeah. Like, uh, for instance, like, um, like a, like, let's say a small character, like, doing, like, a body slam, or slam dunk with, uh, who is it? Zangi? Like, that guy's huge, and then you see it see him being bragged, it just kind of, it just looks surreal. And another thing about the 2D sprites is that, uh, if you're not doing motion capture for them, you have a lot more liberty with, like, what you can make the character do. I mean, really, though, as long as you can make it look alright, I don't really care if you do 3D or 2D. It's just, from a presentation standpoint, I'm still kind of leaning toward 2D. I'm kind of on the same boat as SCR. Uh, it really... To me, it doesn't matter. Like, if the 3D model has like 3D gameplay in the fighting, then um, that's a little different. But the way I'm interpreting the question is like, which one do I prefer, 3D models or 2D sprites? I would go with the uh, 2D sprites because if done right, it feels a lot smoother than 3D. Not that 3D uh, models can't be smooth too, but it always has this weight to it, or it's really floaty. It, it didn't really click with, uh, click with me with 2D fighters, and yeah, there are some stiff fighters, but usually the ones I find, um, whenever I do play them, uh, they, they feel right. And I always like the, the look of 2D, and like SCR said, the whole clipping into each other. It doesn't bother me that much, although that, but it does take you out of it. You gotta, when something like that happens, it does take you out of it. Uh, out of it, you say? Like, just a little bit. Like, not out of the game, just like, whoa. Uh, that, that's weird. <laughs> no kidding. If I had to choose between 2D and 3D, I'd pick 2D, because they're also a lot more colorful, too. Well, I kind of have no opinion on this. Um... Okay, good. Moving on. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> no, wait, Angel, did you actually have something you wanted to say on that? Uh, oh, okay. Well, all right. Last question: What's keeping STXCR motivated to play Escape from Bug Island? The humor value. Well, that was a short response. Yeah, it's to a question today. I think we're getting near. How would I word the climax? Yeah, we are yeah, actually very the close to the part, climax. Because that's well ambiguous. Debate. Also, I want to see how many health items I can end the game with. Uh, that's the KP. Last I checked, I had breached the 250 mark. Now, really? let's get 300! But I believe that's all the viewer questions for this week. As usual, if you have a question you want us to answer on the podcast, leave it in the comments section on the YouTube upload or on the website. You can also ask us on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash rivercitygamers. Now let's go into video updates. Unreal, you're first. Really, um, nothing new, aside from a couple of things. Um, two days ago, I cleaned out my um, my like SD card that I use on my camera, just to like get footage out that I that's been on there for a while, um, including some convention footage or other stuff that I just haven't edited or uploaded, which. Eventually, I'll get around to 
doing those videos. I can't seem to focus on it right now. I mean, I'm actually heading into final territory um, starting like later this week. Any plans? That I haven't mentioned last podcast or the past few podcasts? No. Basically, anything I mentioned previous times, same deal here. The only update I really have is uh, I may or may not be able to uh, work on and get unreleased convention stuff out because I have like maybe two cons and maybe one or two other non-convention stuff that I will upload because... I'm over a year late with Kineticon 2012 video. <laughs> and I still need to tell the story of Camp Anime. Let's look at the uh, and the potential creepy pasta pictures I took. <laughs> <laughs> I think FTR's the only one that knows. I've I showed seen the him pictures, the dear God. It's the only two photos I took. Because everything else were videos, but... Good God! I was that close to buying it, but I didn't, because I feared for my life. Nothing really new outside of that, really. I'm kind of unfortunately lacking in content. I know. I mean, I just haven't had time to do it. Okay, well... Angel. Let's see, this video was supposed to be out in February. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Well, college, personal life, having to work a lot so I can make up the money for a Kineticon. Motivation. But although I did shoot some more footage recently and worked on a bit of the script, and have been thinking through other videos I would be making after this, I might be able to try to make up for this uh, late, for this late video by um, trying to work on another video immediately after. So hopefully you'll see two from me and there is an idea for a series I want um, that isn't video game related but I may end up scrapping it since I'm not sure if I'll ever get around to making that. I mean I have enough workload as it is already. So that's about all I can say about it. Okay well Wiz Two things I'm working on for video. Um, one of them is just requires me getting around to. The other one is scripting. I'm currently having writer's block uh, writing it. I mean, you can get those. Especially when you want to do it really well. And I want, I'm trying to make it short and sweet, and that's kind of the problem. Uh, usually when I write a script, I'll write the first script down or the first draft of it. And then I'll rewrite it, but try and just summarize it a bit better to try and make the video a little short. So, currently having writer's block now. I did record some um, gameplay footage of it. Finally, I get around to that. But I'll have, I'll definitely have something at the end of this month to show for it. Um, so, because I want to get something out for Anna North at, at the panel to show. So, that's, that's my due date and motivation too. So, Expect to see something. I'll try and get it out. And um, there is the... Oh, right. And then there are the other video scripts that uh, I want to shoot. Uh, I'm sure Unreal and um, Zero Master know what those are. And the rest will also know later. Uh, quite possibly after this podcast. Yeah. Plans in progress. Yes, you are. All right, let's bring this home. Uh, I am currently really buckling down on the last few parts of Escape from Bug Island because I want that out of my life, except for Anime North where I might show something related to it there. And uh, as for the next edition of SC On, I have actually switched games that I'm going to be working on for it because I was having huge writer's block with what I was working on before. There was someone else I was going to work on it with, and uh, she couldn't work on it for a while because of an injury. I think the results are showing already because on the old script, I had about a page written over the course of 
a month and a half, two months. And on the game I'm doing now, I made the switch to it last Saturday, and I've already written a full page of it. So, making way more progress on that one faster than the other game. And uh, I'm also going to start recording for the next edition of the Bloody Roar Retrospective. And I'm also working on a new song for my Semblance of Order project. And I think that's about it for me. Oh, shit. I'm not used to going last. Uh... That's, yeah, we're... yeah, and I believe that brings us to the end of this week's podcast. Once again, I'm SCXCR. I am Unreal. I am WizWorld 100. And I am a freak. And don't forget, we do have a panel at Anime North. So far, I think it's slated for Friday at 10 p.m. in one of the Doubletree rooms. Oh, is I that where it's located? I, I, I hope so, because... Um... We just love getting vague e- emails. Now I understand why Zero's, like, really frustrated with all this stuff. Or the trouble he goes through. Yeah. Didn't, have, didn't quite have that my uh, first time paneling, but let's hope this goes well. Well, th- this is, uh, SCR, is this your first time paneling? Yes, it is. Same here. So it's going to be, like, um... It's going to be a train wreck. Come, come watch. On. Uh, Please. There's five of, us, five of us doing it, right? Me. Yes, and Sarah, I'm going to be there. Wiz is going to be there. Unreal is going to be there. Zero is going to be there. Blondie is going to be there. Other people are going to be there. You be there. You be there. You be there. Anyway, I. Damn it. You can do it. How much for bringing it home?